I'm Marissa Semke, in for Brian Lilly. Obama's poor foreign policy, that's the topic of tonight's byline. Because of the power of a concentrated group of college student, students in Iowa who braved the cold on a January evening in 2008 to propel the little-known junior senator from Illinois, Barack Obama, to the top of the heap for the Democratic nomination that year, American foreign policy has become weak and predictable. These students got Barack Obama's party's nomination and consequently the White House. They did it to stop Hillary Clinton, who they saw was an extension of the Bush foreign policy. Hillary Clinton was right at first about the Iraq war. For the ill-informed voters, Obama replacing a term-limited president was sufficient cause to give him a Nobel Prize. They never really cared about substance. Teddy Roosevelt said, speak softly and carry a big stick. To these students, that was preposterous. They preferred the big words and the inaction of their champion, Barack Obama. How much better for the world is it to talk about drawing a red line than to actually do anything? Strategy? Who needs strategy when the course of action is nothing? And now the unstable Obama coalition has to face its reality. The world is in crisis and for six long years, their man has pandered to them by enabling it. But last night, he finally did something. Under his leadership, the man who was elected to not engage in international conflict and preemptive measures has had his hand forced by the course of human events. President Obama authorized airstrikes in Syria and together with the coalition of five other Arab nations, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. Fighter planes, bombers, drones, and cruise missiles struck 14 targets linked to the Islamic State. He had already done this in Iraq. However, if it were not for that coalition of Iowa college students, these airstrikes would have been entirely unnecessary. When the president prematurely withdrew his troops from Iraq, not because the occupation was no longer necessary and not because it was good public policy, but because of the whims of his ill-informed and uninterested political base, he set the stage for the ISIS takeover. You can't turn back the clock. When you're president of the United States, your actions have consequences. James Foley, Stephen Sotloff, David Cawthorn Haynes are those very real consequences. Even when finally taking action, the Obama foreign policy, the hashtag diplomacy doctrine, is still highly flawed. Namely, his emphatic refusal to put boots on the ground, despite what military experts are saying. We, we didn't look for this fight, but once you go into it, you don't tell your adversary in advance what you're not going to do. Harry Truman fired General MacArthur during the Korean War. He was right to reassert civilian control of the armed forces. Obama doesn't have to take counsel of his commanders or of anyone for that matter. However, unlike Truman, he was not a captain in the military and he did not end the Second World War. So yes, he doesn't have to take their counsel, but maybe he should. Because not telling your enemies what you're not going to do is pretty basic strategy. It just makes sense. In Syria, Obama further plans to equip moderate rebels. So now we're playing catch up. Instead of taking action two and a half years ago, he's now scrambling. Even his former Secretary of Defense admits it was a mistake. In retrospect now, was not arming the rebels at that time a mistake? I think that would have helped. And I think in part, we paid a price for not doing that in what we see happening with ISIS. So much for not doing stupid stuff. How heartbroken will those Iowa college students be now that their beloved Obama has become a war president? Will they blame him? Will they not turn out for Democrats in November? Will the president not care of the electoral consequences? or what the opinion polls are saying and break one more promise? His pledge to not put boots on the ground? Because face it, the so-called rebels are not expected to be equipped for a full year and eventually airstrikes will be even less impactful than they are today. So what happens? I predict that his no boots on the ground pledge is another empty promise, like his red line that he will again ignore. Luckily, this time it means action. And that's the byline.